Okay, I told you I was gonna show them to you. These are the breast implants I got to take home from my surgery, a little souvenir, probably gonna hang them on the Christmas tree or something. Anyway, these are saline implants and you can see the little port right here that once they put the implants into the body, they are uh, able to fill them up through this port to get them to the size that, that you need. And so that's, this is what they look like. This is after 25 years. I'm, I'm a little concerned that the fluid inside looks somewhat murky. I'm actually thinking about withdrawing some fluid and having it tested just for fun. Um, but anyway, this is how much size, I don't know, you can see I lost um, uh, taking these out. So they weren't gigantic, but they were, you know, substantial. So um, this is really just to show you that it doesn't really matter what condition your implants are in. I was very sick and my implant, my actual implant looks good. The capsule of scar tissue that forms around the implant can be removed in its entirety. There are different opinions about how an, how an implant is removed. Uh, some physicians, surgeons just take the actual capsule out or the implant out, but they leave the capsule, the scar tissue in. Some uh, surgeons take the entire capsule out, which is what I had done um, and, and wanted to do. Um, and those usually are uh, surgeons that specialize in explant. Um, and then um, some of the surgeons will actually cut into the capsule and then remove the implant in the entire capsule. And some remove the capsule, the exterior part, and the implant all together without cutting into it. That's called an end block a capsulectomy. So there are different ways that they can be removed. Um, there was a study done in 21 that showed that breast implant illness had no uh, change depending on how the procedure was done. So if you're consulting with somebody who does not do the end block capsulectomy, uh, don't despair, it may still be okay. Um, I went with the full capsule removal because I think that it was important for me. I wanted everything out. Um, and so, uh, and, and also a lift afterwards. So there were, uh, there was lots of, um, minor reconstruction done afterwards to try to get them to look as good as possible with whatever tissue I had left. So that's a little bit about the, uh, implant removal and what they look like. Um, the decision is pretty easy for women who have uh, contractures in their implants where they've hardened on one side or their, their breast tissue is pulling on it or they're getting lots of scar tissue around their breast implant. That decision is easy, probably need to have them removed. But if your breast implants like mine felt normal, looked normal, I, it was hard for me to believe that it was my implants causing the problem. I, I just didn't think it was. Uh, until I got those test results back. So that is a more difficult decision to make, is to have your breast implants removed when they feel and look normal. You almost don't want to believe it's your breast implants. And I remember the surgeon, Dr. Chopra, telling me that, Nish, if you have these taken out, you cannot have new ones put in because you're going to have the same problem if it's related to the breast implants. And so the only way to know is to have them removed and to leave them out for a year and just see how you feel. Well, it didn't take me a year. It took me less than 12 hours, less than 24 hours to really start noticing a significant improvement in my health. So uh, everybody's different. Again, not everybody has this problem. Women at risk uh, are women that have been diagnosed with other autoimmune disorders, uh, fibromyalgia, Hashimoto's, any type of rheumatoid arthritis, um, or long-standing problems with getting sick often, where you just have a little bit of a faulty immune system. I would be very cautious in getting implants put in uh, because it's not been studied in any of those groups of women, and those are the women that seem to have the most problems now. So I just wanted to pass that on, and so women can stop going to rheumatology and endocr endocrinology and dermatology and hormone specialists like myself with all of these symptoms, uh, myriad of symptoms and ailments, when really it might just be their breast implants that their body is fighting against. So stay tuned for more information. I want to begin to talk to you about the detoxification program and why it's important. 
If you wanna consult with me on this, I can refer you to places that you can get more information. We can start the testing and I can help walk you down the path of what you need to do for either autoimmune uh, issues that may be stemming from implants or even if you don't have implants or long COVID disorders that you're not coming back from. And this includes men and women. This is not just a chick show. So men or women that may be having problems with extensive long COVID symptoms, I can help walk you through how to get started on the path to wellness. And let's all go through 23 with a little bit better health and mindfulness about detoxification.